Hello and welcome to Bunbury Church Online and this special service for Advent Sunday. The day our new church year begins. The day our countdown to Christmas starts. The day we start this season of expectation and preparation and our prayer is simple. Come, Lord Jesus, come. God's presence with us, not just for Christmas, but for life eternal. And so let us pray. Lord Jesus, light of the world, born in David's city of Bethlehem, born like him to be a king, be born in our hearts and homes this Christmas, be king of our lives today. So let's sing our opening hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So let's say the following prayer together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a collect for this Advent Sunday. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of your love, that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I'm delighted Alex Sanders is going to give today's reflection for Advent Sunday. Today's reading for Advent Sunday comes from Jeremiah chapter 33. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfil the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days, and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Did any of you see The Apprentice on television? A programme where a team of young business hopefuls is given a task, usually to sell something. And they have a short time to prepare for this, making muffins, for example, or buying, choosing goods for sale. They have to brand the product, design the packaging, decide who to sell to, and finally, off they go to sell it. And those who sell least are in line to be fired. And for those of you who didn't see it, we have a similar parallel here in this parish. The preparations beforehand, when is it going to be, what date, who will be able to help, does it clash with anything else? Then the announcement, publicity, posters, tickets, and then the event, the big day, it happens. And what is it? Yep, you've guessed it, the panto. You may be wondering what all this has to do with Advent. The word Advent derives from the Latin meaning coming. But it's more than just a coming because the ad bit of Advent means coming to, coming to us, a specific journey. So Advent is a coming to, and in church we use it particularly to mean Jesus, coming to us, the human race, coming to earth as a man, the best Christmas present God could possibly give us. And as we move into Advent today, we join in the preparation stage of God's huge plan, his salvation plan, that Christ should be born as a man, should come to teach us and guide us, should die on the cross to redeem us, and then rise again, overcoming death. As one hymn puts it, God's salvation plan, wrought in love, born in pain, paid in sacrifice, fulfilled in Christ the man. God, of course, knew what his plan would be and how it would come about. And during our Advent carol service next Sunday morning at Carverley, and during the following four weeks as preparation for Christmas, we will trace the Advent story from its start, through the prophecies of Isaiah and into the world of first century Nazareth. 
and we join in these preparations too, as we prepare to celebrate Christ coming to the world, born as a baby in Bethlehem, and what that actually means for each one of us personally. We reflect on the announcement made by the angel Gabriel to a teenage girl called Mary and foretold by John the Baptist. And on Christmas Day, of course, we celebrate the event itself, God made man. So here we are starting Advent. And because Advent is the forerunner of Christmas, the big event, it is a time of preparation and anticipation, a special church season, special time in its own right, because the rescue of God's people is begun. We look forward with expectancy and excitement. And if we're looking forward to celebrating God sending his son, we will never be disappointed on Christmas Day. Somebody asked me recently why Advent had to be all serious and gloomy rather than letting rip with Christmas carols. A very good question. And the answer is, it doesn't have to be miserable but it is a time of preparation, not only for Jesus' first coming as a baby, but also his second coming as our judge. Because Advent has a double message for Christians. We think, as well as the birth, we think about Jesus' second coming, the day when we are promised he will come in glory to judge the quick and the dead on a date unknown. We need to use this time particularly to lick ourselves into shape, ready to greet the Lord. As St Paul says, the day is near, let us live honourably. Supposing Jesus, the risen Lord, came here in glory to Bunbury Parish this coming Christmas. What would we be proud of and keen to tell him about? In our world, in our country, in our church and in our consciences? And what would we be a bit ashamed of, wish we'd attended a bit more to, or given a bit more time or effort to? It's entirely fitting that today, the first Sunday of Advent and the first day of the Church's New Year, and Happy New Year everyone, that we should be thinking about our Advent resolutions and our Church New Year resolutions and putting them into effect preparing to meet Jesus, to be ready for both his first and second comings. Out with the old, doubts, mistakes and sins, confessed and forgiven, and in with the new, a new start with Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. So this season of Advent is one not yet of celebration, but of anticipation and expectation. Stir up, O Lord, the will of thy faithful people, we heard last week at Evensong, ready for Advent. Stir up and excite. There is an expectation that something unbelievably wondrous is about to happen. And because of this anticipation, we reflect our own, on our own readiness to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. And we realise we're not as ready as we could be. And we need to face up to this before we can hear the words of grace. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, says your God. For before we can celebrate the coming of Christ in all its fullness, we too are called to prepare the way of the Lord. Amen. Thanks, Alex, for that brilliant message. Now for a musical interlude and William Bird's Vigilate.
now Barbara Crowley will lead us in our prayers. At the start of this Advent season, we light the first candle for Advent. We pray for God to come into our lives as St Peter prayed for God to show him his face and he would be saved. We also pray to see God's face, but it is seen in the work we do in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, we have passed through the seasons of the year. Advent is a time when we prepare for the birth of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, the light of the world to all nations. During the past two years, we have all seen and had many difficulties. Many have lost loved ones from their families. Many have lost their jobs and their homes, and many face hardships. Many face loneliness and depression. Father, we lift up to you all the children who do not understand why their lives, why their lives have changed so much. We pray for peace throughout the world and that we learn to live with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who attended the General Synod and that their guidance will, lift the, will uplift the church. We pray especially for churches with fewer and fewer worshippers. We pray that at this Advent, a new, revision, new renewed visions will come to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember all who are ill at home or in hospital. And we also remember those who have lost a loved one. And we remember especially the family of Aubrey Harding and Betty Williams as they grieve for their loved one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our churches in Bunbury, Tilston Fernal and Carveley. And we pray for Tim, Claire and Mike, and for all who minister in our parish. We pray for all who work in, the, in our village, our NHS, in our shops. And we pray for the children in our local schools and for those who will be taking part in the pantomime. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, as we walk into another week, we ask that you will be near us and we remember all, all around us who may just need a welcome smile and encouragement. May we, through our actions, be able to give the Lord's message to all we meet in the coming days. Most merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Barbara, for those lovely prayers. So let's sing our final hymn, Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending.
so a final blessing. May God the Father, who loved the world so much that he sent his only Son, give you grace to prepare for life eternal. May God the Son, who comes to us as Redeemer and Judge, reveal to you the path from darkness to light. And may God the Holy Spirit, by whose working the Virgin Mary conceived the Christ, help you bear the fruits of love and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love today and always. Amen. Let